In the gardening world, two terms often come up when discussing soil health and fertility, humus and compost. They're frequently used interchangeably, but here's the truth. Humus and compost are not the same thing. In fact, understanding the difference between them can completely shift how you approach your garden's soil strategy. Whether you're new to gardening or have years of compost turning under your belt, this guide is designed to help you make smarter, more effective decisions for growing healthier, more vibrant plants. Let's get into it. What is compost? Your garden's active feeder. Compost is what many gardeners consider the black gold of soil improvement, and for good reason. It's a living, breathing mixture of decomposing organic matter, including kitchen scraps, yard waste, manure, and other biodegradable materials. But here's the key detail. Compost is still actively breaking down. That means it's a work in progress constantly releasing nutrients into the soil as microbes continue to digest the materials. At this stage, you can usually still identify bits of eggshell, stems, or straw. These visible remnants are important. They're signs that the compost is alive with microbial activity. That's what makes it so useful for feeding your plants in the short term. When you apply compost to your garden beds, you're essentially giving your soil a buffet. Plants benefit from the gradual release of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and a host of micronutrients, all while microbes feast and flourish. Compost improves aeration, enhances drainage, and, you know, jumpstarts microbial populations. It's particularly useful in depleted or sandy soils that are in need of both nutrition and structure. But compost, as powerful as it is, isn't forever. Over time, it continues to break down and eventually transforms into something even more valuable. Humus. Now let's talk about humus, the quiet champion of soil fertility. Humus is the final stable product of decomposition. It's dark brown to black in color, crumbly in texture, and rich in carbon compounds. But unlike compost, humus has gone through every stage of breakdown and reached a point where it resists further decomposition. That stability is what makes it so important. You can't rush humus. It forms slowly, often taking years to develop from organic material that's passed through microbial digestion and sometimes even earthworms. By the time humus appears in your soil, it's chemically complex and biologically mature. It doesn't smell like rotting vegetation, it doesn't heat up like compost. But it holds an incredible amount of water, up to 90% of its weight, and binds nutrients in a way that keeps them available to plants over the long haul. Unlike compost which feeds your plants right now, humus feeds your soil forever. It serves as a permanent food bank for soil life offering a long-term energy reserve that helps microbial communities remain active even in dry or nutrient-poor conditions. When it comes to plant health, compost and humus offer distinct advantages. Compost delivers a quick nutrient burst. It boosts microbial diversity and activity, which in turn helps suppress diseases, release nutrients, and speed up plant growth. If you're planting vegetables or flowers and want fast results, compost is your go-to tool. But compost also continues to decompose. That means its structure and volume change over time, and it must be replenished regularly. It's excellent for regular feeding, but it doesn't provide the lasting foundation that your soil needs. Humus, on the other hand, doesn't feed your plants directly. Instead, it stabilizes the entire soil ecosystem. It increases cation exchange capacity, or CEC, meaning it helps soil hold on to nutrients like calcium, magnesium, and potassium, it buffers pH, improves soil tilth, and most importantly, it builds resilience. Humus-rich soil doesn't dry out as fast, doesn't leach nutrients as easily, and bounces back more quickly after stress, whether that's a drought, flood, or heavy foot traffic. In essence, compost is like giving your plants a meal, while humus is like setting up a well-stocked pantry that never goes empty. Here's where many gardeners get tripped up. Technically, you can't make humus in the same quick, hands-on way you make compost. Humus forms over time, often deep in the soil or in a pile that's been aging for years. That's why you won't find bags of pure humus on most store shelves, only humus-rich compost or humified soil blends. So the better question is, how do you build humus in your garden? Start with compost. Use it to feed your soil with active nutrients and to establish strong microbial populations. Add it to raised beds, mix it into planting holes, top dress your containers, and layer it over lawns. Over time, with enough organic matter cycling through your garden, portions of that compost will transition into humus naturally. 
especially if you support the process with cover crops, mulching, worm activity, and avoiding synthetic chemicals that disrupt microbial life. So if you're looking to, you know, really supercharge the process, combining compost with worm castings, biochar, or even aged leaf mold, can totally accelerate the formation of those humus-like materials in your soil. But here's the thing. It all begins with organic matter and, of course, the commitment to nurturing life below ground. Ultimately, compost and humus, well, they work best together, don't you think? Compost is your active builder. It brings life, nutrients, and structure to your soil. Humus is your soil's memory. It holds on to everything good and ensures your efforts pay off for years to come. So, you know, don't choose between them. Instead, build compost regularly, apply it thoughtfully, and garden in a way that encourages your soil to do what it does best, create humus slowly, invisibly, and powerfully. This is the secret to deep living soil that grows stronger with every season. Let's make soil that lasts. If this guide helped you understand the difference between compost and humus, and more importantly, how both affect plant health, then you're already on the path to becoming a soil-savvy gardener. Take what you've learned and apply it to your garden this week. Observe how your soil responds. Notice how water retention changes. See the difference in your plant's vigor. And most importantly, just give your soil time to build its own legacy. For more soil smart guides like this, hit that subscribe button and share this video with a fellow gardener. Let's grow better soil together, one compost heap and humus layer at a time.